In my family, not my immediate family, but extended family and sure. probably everyone's, there have been a lot of broken marriages and kids raised in different s situations. And I look at some of these kids who did, in my opinion, turned out very well. I, I think what would have happened had their parents stayed together and I think they would have been different. Sure. Um, but they're, they're, I, can't, I can't say for sure they, that they would be so much better. I mean, they had a hard time, some of them, but it also made them survivors. It made them sort of, it, it, they, they had, I mean, you look today at, at these helicopter parents in sure. these upper middle class homes and right. some of the kids I'm seeing sure. in college and then you meet working class kids who had sort of a d more difficult time or even some of the kids in my family who were had to be. And you just wonder if there aren't some advantage. I, mean, I don't want to say advantages because it, you know you wouldn't want to put someone sure. through that. But on the other hand, a lot of those kids do seem, I don't know, seem to be a little more, uh, I, don't know, I can't even say well adapted, but just ready for the w to take on the world than these hyper Yeah, no, I think, I mean, I think, you know, being raised by a single mother can, I think, in some ways, um, for instance, that's my experience, can, you know, give you certain experiences um, that are challenging in ways that actually do prepare you kind of um, later in life for, you know, uh, a tough scenario of one sort or another. But I think we have to sort of just acknowledge that on average, again, the sort of average story here is more risk for kids raised apart from the intact married families. Another important point That's here is- That's a good point though. It is, it's a risk. It's not saying this yeah, will happen. Right. It just says, uh, you know, maybe 25% of kids are in yeah. from intact, from broken homes are, you know, going to right. run into serious problem. It's the, the percentage is a lot lower. And different kids experience family instability differently. There's a fascinating new study from my uh, mentor at Princeton, Sarah McClanahan, looking at genes actually and father absence. And what she's finding is it looks like some boys um, have a kind of genetic risk for acting in an antisocial way. Um, and it's those boys, not all boys, but those boys who are more likely to be affected on that outcome, you know, when their dad's absent from the home. So again. And if the, but boys with that gene and the father's in the, the home. Yeah, but the complex of genes that are related to this. So there's a way in which there may be kind of an interaction between nature and nurture here so that some kids, again, are being affected more by, you know, in this case, fatherlessness than other kids. And so other kids are going to be pretty resilient in the face of, you know, different family configurations. Well, I guess uh, one thing I wanted to ask you is suppose someone said, look, what's really happening here is that uh, there are people who get married and they have, you know, a stability gene and sure. they pass that along to their right. kids. So what you're really seeing isn't the benefit of marriage, it's the benefit of a certain kind of, uh, you know, biological inherit. Sure. What do you say to that? I think that it's certainly the case that, that some of the, the findings that we've been seeing with regards to family structure are really artifacts of some kind of genetic, you know, thing. So if the mom had a risk, you know, for depression, um, and then she ended up getting divorced, partly because she was more likely to be depressed, um, and her daughter is depressed, you might think that divorce causes depression, when in reality it was some kind of genetic risk uh, that was passed from exactly. mother to daughter in that sense. And that seems to be part of the story in the family structure uh, findings. But there is a lot more work being done today by people like Bob Emery at UVA um, and his colleagues with twins. And so they were able to look at adult twins where both sets of twins are getting married and then they track their kids and see of those adult twins who gets divorced and how their kids turn out. And they can kind of figure out from that design that some of the effects that we're talking about um, today are related to genes and some of them are a fact or a consequence, if you will, it looks like, um, based upon these models of the sort of um, the environmental effect of divorce on kids. If you had to choose one study that you've either done or looked at that you know, would really show people that this matters, and it can't be, it's not it's just easily explained away that, that stable families with the parents in the home, can you cite one or? Well, I think a good, a good paper that reviews a lot of this evidence in a very powerful way is by Sarah McClanahan, my mentor at, at Princeton, and some of her colleagues. Um, it's a review piece on the sort of causal effects of father absence for children. So it kind of looks at a, a variety of studies and tries to assess how much of the impact of having um, a father absent from the home is having a, a causal impact on kids and how much of the apparent of sort of outcomes might be related to some other factors that, you know, that more sophisticated models are, are addressing. So that's a good, I think, article to kind of give to someone who's a little bit skeptical about all this.